Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show increases the live audience, of course, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Zoe, The Plain Truth, Sleeping Warrior and Arwin. How are you all doing? Hong Kong. Hong Kong. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good. 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 Good to have you. Hey, Nathan, these, uh, these last few hangouts, they seem to become very long uh, in the second part. <laughs> it's just timing. My kid falls asleep. So, uh, you know, once she tends to fall asleep towards the second half of the second show, which means I can just carry on because she's asleep. That won't be the case today because she's asleep now. So she'll probably wake up. <laughs> Yeah, if I can run them longer, I will. How are you Sorry. doing, Zoe? Not hey, you would, you mind, would you mind presenting my screen while it's quiet? I'll get something uh, presented quick. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Are we on? You are? I had a uh, um, I was responding to the show yesterday. Um, it's gone further than that in the last 24 hours. Um, Ruhif's point was that um, there's a cumulative drop issue. And he says that when we show the turbines from on the on the x axis from the side profile, that you're only seeing it over two miles. And you know, if, to some degree, he's got a point. I know it's debatable; it's a moot point, but nonetheless, it is it is a, it is a point in my opinion. But um, it was furthered yesterday when we showed this is the issue um, over one mile or so. These lampposts are not curving over any curve. You can see that they're all straight, but the main attribute of the picture is perspective. But it's the same as this. The main attribute of that picture is perspective. Things go down in straight lines. But Chris Monkselly um, from Flat Earth Core, FE Core, produced this. And what, what, he, what he shows is that if the turbines were going over the horizon, you would see an exponential drop along the top edge too. Now, based, and this is done at 13 miles, I think it was. The, th the furthest turbine was 13 miles. The nearest one was 11 miles. And it's a close representation of what Ranty's picture shows. So basically, if Earth sphere cannot, if the, if the Earth is a sphere, this cannot be a straight line. It has to do an exponential curve the way that this is modelled. But because we see it as a as a dead straight line going through the hubs, that doesn't support living on a sphere. It supports living on a flat. And the only way this would be um, comparable is if the refractive conditions were just so just so perfect that it happened to look flat again. So it just pushes it on from yesterday's claim, which was that even over less than a mile, perspective is the main point in the picture. Chris has modelled it, and if it was really going over a curve, the cur you would see that there would be a curve at the top, and obviously the top part is flat, flat as, a, as straight as an arrow. So make of that what you will. Deny it if you will. Dismiss it if you will. End of the day, this is a flat earth proof. Turbines should bend over the curve. And if they are, then they must be curving. And as you can see inside elevation, they're not curving. They're built like everything on a flat expanse. All you are seeing when you see them match up with the maths that says they're curving is the effects of perspective because they're not curving. Now, regardless of people, uh, I think Ruhiff's argument was that, well, we're only seeing this from a very short distance. So there's no chance for an accumulated drop. But if it's true that they are dropping in a 13 mile observation, then it is true that they are curving inside profile when you look 90 degrees to the observation and they do not. If they are curving, 
they are curving and you should see it absolutely on both axes but you don't all right so let's let's deal with this then because i think the one degree for 69 miles is a point that we really need to focus on because in my mind one degree for 69 miles equals eight inches per mile square if it doesn't then i'd like to you know talk about why but to me they're they're the same equation in different symbols because that's the argument from the side profile of the turbines is that the degree of curve is so slight you won't notice it because that's their answer so you can't see the curvature from the side profile because the degree is so slight okay. Yeah, it makes no difference. If it's curving in one direction, it has to curve in the other. It's as simple as that. You can't just have it curving on one axis. So for years, I've had these arguments with globe heads, and you only ever have one axis to show them. You never have the side profile to show them that it's not curving. All they tell you is how much obstruction there should be in the z-axis. They never go side onto it and show you a curve. They never show you a curve. Well, what do, you, what do you think about correlating the 8 inches per mile squared and the 1 degree for 69 miles? So if it's 69 miles, then you're going to do the 8 inches per mile squared, and I round it up to 70, and that turns out to be, in the full equation, 3,200 feet of drop, I believe. Hmm. So then the way that I've looked at it, and I, that's why I'm asking you guys, is that 1 degree is actually 3,200 feet of drop which actually is quite significant. It's not, it's not slight. Right. Well, when you work it out, looking down the line of it, you've got a lot of drop. You've got a lot of curve. You should see it in right. the other axis. I, I don't see the problem. Yeah. Well, no, no, what, no. I, I, I don't either. I just am trying what, to... What they do with that, that one degree point is that they try and make it sound like it's not a lot by saying it's one degree. Right. But like you say, that one degree is still thousands of feet of drop. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Is that correct? Is well, that correct to say that just, there's... It's just rescaling it. If you say that the right. sun's 93 million right. miles, Anthony, but then Anthony, right. into inches, Anthony, right. are you, are you fiddling with your microphone? Oh, I am, yeah, sorry. Right, well, all we can hear is you fiddling with your microphone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then I'll stop. I keep forgetting about that. I'm sorry. Fidget spinner. Heads above. Yeah, I need a fidget spinner, yeah. Hands above but, the sheet. But it, it's, like, it's like converting the distance of the sun. Um, instead of saying it's 93 million miles... If you, can, if you were to sell it, like, convert it into a different unit, you can make it sound a lot further right, by, by right. moving the decimal place one way That's or making what... it sound a lot closer by moving the decimal place the other way. So all they're doing by making that one degree is basically changing the decimal place by making it sound like a smaller number. Right. It's like yeah. they do the same with Dang Joss when they, um, you know, for this bending of light, they use Dang Joss as the proof that you can bend light over a curve. Yet they use um, liquid butane, which has got like um, a water state. I think it's something like minus 50 degrees Celsius or something like that. And it's like, yeah, dude, we don't see that fluctuation in the atmosphere. We see micro temperature changes, like really small ones, minuscule ones. We see minor temperature um, pressure changes. We see minor. Yeah, you're touching the microphone changes. again. Pardon? You're touching the microphone again. I'm not. I'm holding it. I wasn't doing anything with it. Just don't touch it. Just leave it alone. And above know, the sheets, I've to, Riley. I've got to pull it close enough to my mouth so you can hear me, because if I do it too far away, you moan about that too. <laughs> yeah, it must but be anyway. the way that you're hearing, not the microphone itself. Anyway. Yeah, the, about the, uh, the degree uh, on the uh, x-axis, uh, with some of this footage that we have been taking, and also, for example, a, a Tim has taken with his drone in the Nevada desert or the salt flats, I mean. I don't know, is, is that the same? Anyway, uh, you can see mountains very far away, even in that. And altogether, if you then uh, basically, yeah, tie that all in together, you should eventually be seeing those 69 miles within <coughs> one photograph, no problem, as long as the uh, air clarity uh, is sufficient that you can see far enough so yeah you should be able to then see that one degree of curvature and measure it should be there maybe not very close by then yeah you're not going to get enough distance on the x-axis but if the air clarity is sufficient then you will eventually be able to see far enough 
and measure out that one degree of curvature on the x-axis. Indeed. Right, guys? If it's curving, it's curving. Shame we never see it. Yep. Well, I've got my microphone on the table now. Am I, am I at the right volume? <laughs> Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> right, let me let me share again because I wanted separation between my last point and the current point. So let me know. Yeah, ready whenever you are. We do have Sly Sparkane in chat, and I want the world to realise and to know that the guy's been called out. Um, basically, the other day I got some rather interesting footage. Um, again, it was back on the beach. And this is on the back of the um, my most popular video on my channel, which was what was the land, what was the floaty land we seen, and that was taken from the uh, the top of one of the highest hills at like 100 feet, and we could see floaty land. And Sly said, "Yeah, Riley, go back to the beach and get it." So I went back to the beach and I got floaty land from the beach. He denied it and he said he couldn't see it, and basically said, "Well, where's Ramsey, Riley? Even if the land was there, where's Ramsey?" So I went back for a second time and I got Ramsey. And I'll now play it so that you can see Ramsey. Um, so obviously we've got Snaefell on the left. We've got North Burial Mountain on the right. And as we um, play this next clip, we can see that the, the land tapers off to the water point, which is here. And then what we're looking for is more land between the end point that's in here that drops into the water. Ramsey sits in that gap there somewhere. Now, the problem is... I pause it here and I miss it in the video originally, but there is land evidenced here in the middle of the picture. Now that land I missed at the time, but that land is not the land that we are looking for because I didn't expect to see it. The land we're looking for is this land. Now, thankfully, Sly has now finally conceded that this land is actually land. It's not a manifestation of the eye or some kind of lens thing or a smudge. He's actually acknowledging that this now is land. The problem is, this should not be seen if we live on a sphere. I'll come to the mat in a sec, which was my point in the video, and Sly didn't address it. So basically, as I go through this imagery here, this is the land I was actually looking for. Didn't realise there was more land to the left, which is a problem if, if you think that we live on a ball. But the land that's now currently being displayed is only, two, on average, 250 feet roughly in height. Now, there are peaks. I'm not addressing the peaks. We're seeing more than just a peak of the tippy tops. We're seeing land. And on average, it's about 250 feet tall. We're seeing it. So 250 feet tall is the key point. So if I now bring up a curve calculator, and I'll have to get rid of that, get rid of some stuff here, get rid of that, get rid of that, keep that, get rid of that. So if I bring up curve calculator, um, this is the bit that Sly was asked to address, and he hasn't addressed it. Um, distance in miles is about 33, 34. I think I did it on 33 on the video. Um, observer height, I said 10. He went with 5. I'll put 5 in if he's happy with 5. I was being generous with 10. But the point is, the land that we're looking at is only 250 feet, but there's a drop of 762, uh, 726 feet. Well, a drop of 700 feet means that land at 250 feet should not be seen. It should be 500 feet behind the curvature of the Earth. But there should be also a 181-foot wall of water between me and the target at half the distance. And if you understand how perspective works, you know that things that are bigger in the foreground can block out things behind. But also, the horizon is only meant to be 2.74 miles away at an observer height of 5 feet. So at 2.74 miles... This is supposed to be 2.74 miles, but we're clearly seeing land, significant land, here. So the, the problem becomes, well, how is this consistent with living on a spheroid? Now, obviously, it isn't consistent with living on a spheroid because the horizon is clearly more than two miles away. That boat is not two miles. That boat is sat. Is he, he's just below the horizon. That makes it less than two miles away. He's clearly not. He's miles away. But this land is supposed to be completely gone behind the curve of the earth we should not see it so the question that i asked sly was can you explain why this land is seen and basically what sly did the little worm he had a whole hangout um not a hangout uh, yeah it was a it was a hangout let's go back to the bit where i'm zoomed out 
He had a hangout based on the idea that... I'm just looking for the bit I need. Here we go. His hangout was based on the idea that the, um, the, the water level has risen. So what his argument is, is that the hard horizon, the hard water line that we seem to see along the bottom of the image has risen up the image. But the only way you can claim that that's true is if the land to the right is submerged by the same horizon that you're claiming that's right, that's risen. And the land isn't submerged, Sly. So you can't claim that the horizon has risen up if the land that's to the right of what we're about to see is still visible and we see the land. So your claim that the horizon has risen... I mean, I'll give you that there's a little bit of a, an optical thing going on there. Don't know what that is. Can't explain it. May not, may not be important. Might be important. But if the horizon has risen up the way he claims then this land here would be covered by the horizon. But the problem is the horizon hasn't risen up. So well, what Sly's done is he's... Sorry, sorry. He's you're calling it the horizon. I know that's what Sly labelled it. But we're talking about a bulge that sits between us and this target, this piece of land in the distance, whatever it may be. Now, a straw man that it may not be Ramsey is irrelevant. The bottom line is there's land in the picture. And if you descend and there's a bulge between you and that land, then it should obviously disappear with the bulge obscuring it. But it doesn't. So, and I agree, um, whether it's Ramsey or not is irrelevant. The point is that we see land there that should be completely gone by two, three times the height of the land that we see by the curve of the earth. There should be a wall of water between us and it that's 150 feet, which is basically almost taller than the land itself, but it's half the distance. So perspective applies. So we're seeing land that should not be there. And that was the question that Sly was given. And he, he had the freedom and the flexibility to answer it in video format by response or by message, which he, he chose to do video, which is great, but he never answered the question. So what then has happened since then is I've, um, I've challenged Sly in, um, with uh, a most recent, my most recent video, which has gone up. And basically what I want Sly to do is have a hangout with me because Sly's pretending that he's answered the question, but he clearly hasn't. And if he had have answered the question, this video would not exist. Sly claims that he's answered the question. No, you haven't. Um, let's just make that a little bit clearer so it comes through. Hopefully this is going to come through. It's not going to give it me clear, is it? Why is it not doing that now? Play it on screen play this, just not... read it and hopefully the people can hear it because you'll read it and it's clear enough to just about read. Sly claims... Oh, there we go. So Sly claims that we can see... Uh, I did answer that. The smeary, wavy, unstable bit, he links it. No, he didn't. That's the point. Are you up for a hangout on your channel in front of your own subs? We need to start with the points that we do agree on and keep going until we get to the point that we disagree on. I'll prepare the statements and we can go through them one by one until we disagree. Name the time, sir. Just me, you, nobody else, adult talk, no third party. It must be on your channel in front of your subs. It must be at least three hours of advertisement beforehand because I want the maximum amount of your subs in the audience to sit in the... Oh, how did that happen? Right, there will be a short intermission as we've obviously lost our guests. I didn't see anybody join and snipe anybody. Should be the work of just a moment. Welcome to the show. Hi, Owen. Hello. Yep. Sorry, uh, I didn't have the back chat open, so. It's, it's all right. I was watching the snipers and I thought I'd got them all, but uh, such is life. 
So uh, I got it now. Thank Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Yo. I'll leave the link private for a little bit, I think, as uh, clearly the snipers are around. Yeah, I didn't know it had gone public. That's what you do. That's what happens, you see, Nafe, if you don't warn us that you're doing it. It's, it's always public. Just assume it's always public. <laughs> Come on, well, boys. In, in any event, I don't know where I got up to before I was booted, but the bottom line is Sly claims he's managed to answer the question, and I'm calling him out. So make sure you go over and bully the guy into accepting my reasonable terms. Um, he hasn't answered the question, and I want it. I want closure on it. So bully Sly. Best room to accept. It's not unreasonable. Let's do it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I can go with that. Yeah, they haven't got very strong arguments at the moment for this uh, ignorance of perspective. This ignorance means that when Sly does things like he did last night and he just ignores that there's a bulge in between us and them, i.e. the target, then... You're ignoring the fact that there's supposed to be something blocking your view that isn't. And that's what a sphere is, right? Yeah. Mr. Meekin's yeah. asking for a link. <laughs> hey, before uh, you go public again, shall I uh, read out my poem? You can do whatever you like, Arwen, if you want to read a poem. Yeah, I made it this uh, this morning, just spontaneously again. I seem to be having a lot of inspiration recently. So. <clears throat> right. Uh, it doesn't have a name yet, but who cares? A poem Mission. by Arwin. Yeah. Hey, Chris Monk. Yo. Hey, Chris. Hey. Right. How's it going? So, let me start. Mission, oh mission, how hard can you be to make the plain truth for all to see? Oh mission, oh mission, to keep you in line. Just close your eyes and the globe will be thine. We're sick of these lies. We want what's real. You stick to believing what you prefer to feel. This global deception humanity shares. It won't be revealed if no one cares. Keep on pressing the points to be pressed. Stay true to what you learn, and you will be blessed. We. It feels like it needs another verse, Arwen. Yeah, they always do. But... <laughs> yes, but it's very nice and on the same. All the same, rather. <laughs> yeah, the, like I just wrote it down, and then I kept on... Uh tumbling around in my head and I got other ideas so I'm probably going to break it apart at some point and then Hi Nathan Something Adam. even better with you. Oh and that was beautiful Lovely Thanks Yeah I'm, I'm not one for writing poetry I can do the odd dirty limerick but that's about it out of my skill set that well done mm -hmm. Well practice makes perfect and in and this case I, it mainly usually when I get some real inspiration for poetry it's about the first two lines that's usually but and then the rest just gets attached on it like a tail and but yeah the first two lines the whole thing about the mission our mission the flat earth mission and the o mission the leaving away of perspective and yeah it just rolled out of there i think the first two words could be your title mission o mission why not? And, and I also think that because I said it need, feels like it needs another verse is indirectly kind of like a compliment saying that it was good. No, it definitely could. I just, yeah, I, I just stopped and went to get some groceries. And after that, everybody talked to me about it. And then, yeah. I, I lost Read it time. again then, Arwen. Read it again. Come on. Really? Let's, yeah, come on. Let's, okay. have, let's, let's digest it a second time. Right. Okay. Well, now it's called Mission Omission. So, Mission Omission. How hard can you be to make the plain truth for all to see? Omission, Omission, to keep you in line. Just close your eyes and the globe will be thine. We're sick of all these lies. We want what's real. You stick to believing 
what you prefer to feel. This global deception humanity shares. It won't be revealed if no one cares. Keep on pressing the points to be pressed. Stay true to what you mean, to what you learn, and you will be blessed. I like it. That's good, yeah. Yeah, it's a great poem, Arwen. Really good. Thanks. It reminds me of that, uh, oh, Captain, my Captain, type of thing. It gives me that, that feel, you know? Robin Williams, oh, Captain, my Captain. Yeah, yeah. Mission, mission, oh, mission, my mission. It's all mission. What is your mission? I like that. Thanks. Very good yeah. play on words, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, English language. It's, yeah. it's nice when you can see if the meaning of it can have different layers if you just arrange the words correctly then you you can just like these different dimensions pop out of it and i love that how that works sometimes how things fall into place i find that the most interesting about language multiple layers of meaning you're going to send it is in sky uh, yeah, it's in the master B chat. If if you'll give permission, we'll give that a read on either TFR or Friday, if that's all right. Oh. Quite, quite <laughs> right. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah. Great. Great. No problem. Just just mention my channel name and. No, I was hoping to take credit for it. <laughs> I'll sue you. Uh, <laughs> No, it's not. Uh, it's not copyrighted anyway. But uh, yeah, no. Feel free to to share it. Yeah. I wasn't watching chat then. Did anybody see a comment from Sly? Accepting my gracious offer. I don't believe he has. Has he? Is he still in chat? I don't think he is. Is he? That's a shame. Well, in the absence of Sly still being in chat. Can you have Riley open that link, please? <laughs> what link's he talking about, guys? Anybody know what link he's talking about? Am I still here or have been kicked? No, you're still here. Our silence was our own mission. He's put a, he's, he said, there is a mirage. You even said that there is mirage going on in the beginning of your vid. Sure. And then he says, can you have Riley open that link, please? Sly, can you repost the link? I don't know where you've posted it and tell me where the link is. Hmm. Oh, yeah, by the way, Chris Wong, now that you're on the panel, uh, thanks again for the other day for the uh, for the CGI assistance that I asked for oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, to, no uh, to emulate the, the looming of the globe of the heavens. That was that was excellent. I'm, I'm did you, did you use it for a presentation or are you going to use it for something? Yeah, I sure. was going to use it uh, this Tuesday, but then, uh, yeah, the Hangout got extended for over an hour and football and everything, and it was really hot. So I'm going to try again tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, but I still, uh, I got it in, uh, I got it saved. So I'm, I will definitely use it as an example of what it would be like if everything was actually looming into a flat plane. Dawn Tread is in chat. Do you want to join Dawn? Maybe you can help with a slight cuddle. I look forward to it. We ridiculed for you for that, Arwin, because we were on a different point at the time. Me? Yeah, we because we were, I think we were debating with Ruhif at the time. <clears throat> and I was saying, why give him his um, whatever degrees of refraction? And your argument, your counter argument was to say that the the globe of the heavens would also loom if we had this atmospheric effect of looming. That was your counter argument. But at the mm -hmm. time, I can't, I can't remember what our counter argument was, but I felt it was a stronger argument. So I was like stopping you from saying that despite yeah. how valid it may or may not be. Now, you were arguing mostly that 
it is just a ridiculous concept that is looming and they can't even make it work in any uh, emulation. And it is a good argument, but I was just proposing what if then it would all have to be just the, the consequence of a concept and how it would fall apart even within the theory itself, just like the concept of the vacuum in space and space travel and how the air is supposed to be sticking to the ball. That's of course purely theoretical, but if you just entertain the concept for a moment, then you can just unravel it, it with the seams. And that's what I was trying to do with the looming. But yeah, you prefer to just hammer the, well, that, that's, the nonsense of it. Of course. I'm, I'm happy to do it now because it's much more controlled when you're not in the middle of a debate. But uh, it, to me, it is ludicrous, you know, to suggest that this stuff is is not really there. To me, is just farcical. Right. Yeah. In that sense, it, the most ridiculous thing about it is that when looming is actually detected uh, within photographs, within camera footage. It's always a very specific band. It's always a very specific area that's being exclusively loomed. And it's never like, it's never like you say, like 90% of your viewing, uh, of your view. It's not like everything. It's always a very narrow band. It's usually very near to the horizon. So it's always kind of relatively far away, never really close by. So then to suggest that it is all uniformly looming with a, a yeah, with a, a, a vast angular size, basically, that the thing is just a massive amount of uniform looming. There is no proof that that is even possible. There's just no proof of that happening ever. It's, oh, a looming is always a very narrow band. It's never oh, and a big part. Oh, and did you see my video where I was asking whether that whether this was looming or not? Yeah. Do you think that's looming in the picture, or do you think it's something else? It's to be honest, it could be. There was definitely something going on, but it was kind of hard to tell. It was also it seemed to be. I don't know. It's, could you was... could you show it again? Yeah. I, I did take a look at it though. But it was kind of difficult to tell because I think it was kind of cloudy, correct? No, no, it was good weather. It was just dusk. Ah, right, yeah. So the shadow workings and everything. But I think it was probably looming, indeed. The reason why I think it's looming rather than um, some, some other description is because we can rule out that which is not by... Um, uh, let me know, Nath, when it's on. Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, you're on. Um, we can rule out what the other optical effects are because they don't. It doesn't share the same characteristics. Um, you'll see now that. I mean, forget about the the beginning bit where it dips into the water. Um, that's not really the interesting bit. The interesting bit is what happens on the other side, because. You can see where the hard horizon is, or the apparent hard horizon is here, and the land drops down into the water. And I have no idea what this is, but in the context of what is on the other side, if it was a mirage, like it's like that that horizon there should be here. Yeah. For some reason, it's being it's not even duplicated. It's being physically moved up, which is what makes me think it's looming. Can I ask you about the conditions in that very moment? Was it like really hot or really moist? No, it was cooling down. It had been war it had been a warm day. It was dry, very dry, um, and it was basically cooling down for the day. Um, but what mm -hmm. if it was a mirage? There would be a this line here would be repeated underneath, and then usually it would be upside down, just yeah. immediately be below it, and then you would say, well, it's just a deep fat Morgana. Well, but it, there's, there's nothing there, and there's maybe, nothing underneath it either. Maybe it has something to do with uh, the rapid change of temperature. Because if the air was cooling off uh, quite rapidly, so like the heat was being sucked off it, uh, then at the same time the oceans have of course been heating up throughout the day from the heat, then maybe the oceans are like releasing quite a lot of heat 
while at the same time the the uh, yeah the heat is being uh, blown off sucked off there and so, that oh. maybe that is the, the effect that that has been causing that well that looming well the thing is if this is looming and i think this is looming because there is no repeat of this bit anywhere else it looks like the horizon is being loomed up because it's not actually here anymore for some reason it's above i have no idea why what was what's going on but well, this concept of looming that part further away in relation to the to the island there to the left it's 34 miles away it's about the same distance same distance hmm. well maybe but, that particular spot within the ocean is releasing a, a lot of heat well in any event um if if looming is the is a thing the way they describe it it means it's being brought back up from behind the horizon but the question would be well what does it do does it overlay the 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 sky that's there which in this case you could argue it would be an overlay but where it's land behind which would be at the beginning of the video if this was being loomed up what's happening with the with the land in the foreground because we still see this band at the bottom of the horizon it's the same thickness right the way across mm -hmm. but it looks like it's overlaying the land in the foreground like it is well I, I have a theory for that and that is if there is like uh, well uniform conditions that causes this looming effect to be everywhere maybe the looming right there is visible because the it's not being obstructed by anything well like the it, mountain could be obstructing the looming well i was going to say the mountain be behind the mountain just like the the looming is an effect of light right so there's no there's light skipping on the water in the electromagnetic wave so it's part of the looming effect right right whereas the mountain wouldn't be doing that in front of it right yeah well, exactly the, the reason why i'm pointing out looming or saying that this is looming is because in ranty's pictures of barrow in finesse from like a foot above the water we don't see this duplicated or this replacement horizon above it so if this is looming it means that ranty's stuff it cannot be looming maybe some else that they'll have to give a name to but this is not the same effect that we see in ranty's we don't see any effect in ranty's we see it because it's there but if this is looming then this is what it should look like it look it should be the, the the artificial horizon raised up the way it looks here so i well, mean i'm not saying I I, I'm, I'm not saying it is or isn't i'm just asking uh, it's different it's a different type of effect uh, because the the looming <coughs> that that Brenty has shown with the boats and everything and uh the the close yeah the relatively low angle uh, yeah the very low oh, i'm sorry i'm not getting out of my words here uh, the the land the the buildings and everything that type of loomy uh, looming i think that has some more to do basically with the the, the yeah the viewing angle ending oh, damn it. you're definitely getting some inversion there too hey eh? here i think this is more like a um inversion no i don't really see any inversion where do you see the, the irregular inversion? condition i think this is more irregular it, condition it was back so back a little bit there there was a spot where the couple of places are inverted to Well, I don't, I don't see any inversion there. Right, there is right, an inversion right, right, right there in the, in the dark line. There's a inversion, not much, but there's there's some there. I don't know. I see what looks like an inversion here because it looks like these bits are being duplicated. Possibly not. I don't know. Um, Come back a little bit there. Well, maybe there. Yeah, we're, oh, you're going too fast. But anyway, you can kind of see where the dark spot is there, right there. Oh, let's go back. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get it now. But anyway, uh, could this compare to Ranty's footage? I think that Ranty's footage, in that, in those types of footages, it is caused by the field of view narrowing down, causing that apparent slant and causing the circle of confusion effects, which are very local. But with this, I think it has more to do with irregular atmospheric Hi, conditions. Hi Sam, hold on, Owen. Hi Sam, are you a real no, person? I kicked him. Okay. Don't don't me. Probably a troll. Well, yeah. my yeah, position is that I think this is looming the way that they describe it as it's hey, being Jose. loomed up from. Mm -hmm. that, that probably is. I think you're right. <laughs> Trust no one, my show. <laughs> <laughs> but if no it one. is looming, then the horizon has been replaced and lifted up the way they describe it. And this isn't even flat or round point. 
The point is that it's replaced the original Horizon. And if the, if this is looming, then we don't see this in Ranty's work. We just see the Horizon because it's there. But if if it was this, Ranty should look like this if it was looming, but it doesn't. Ranty's just looks totally normal, and that's why I don't think that Ranty's getting looming. And I think this is looming. Uh, what do you think, it's, Nathan? It's a different type of looming. With his, it's more local looming caused by the, the field of view narrowing down. Uh, that type of distortion well, effect. I don't think I don't think Ranty's got looming at all. I don't think Ranty's got looming either. Well, those buildings, remember, he did get one photo where they did seem to be st stretched upwards. Yeah, that's got a name, that though. It's called Towering. Okay. All right. Well, sure. Yeah. All I'm saying is that they say that looming is the, bring, the, the bringing stuff back from behind the curve. Well, whether this is curve or flat, whatever, we do see that the, it appears to have risen the horizon, and that would satisfy what they're describing as looming. But if it is, it looks like it's it's kind of... I don't know what this is. It's weird. But I'm, I'm going to say that this is looming, and this is what you should see in Ranty's work if it was actually looming. And if this is not looming, somebody tell us what it is, because it is an atmospheric thing. I was going to say, the point is that there's there's an atmospheric condition that's obviously at play, and it is distorting the image and raising the image, and it's obvious that something is weird, yeah? Whereas in yeah. Ranty's pictures, nothing's weird. When there is Correct. weirdness, he's got, like you say, the clock tower upside down on top of itself in one of the images, but that's it. Well, that effect is obvious, and an obvious effect of refraction, if you want to label it that, but... The rest of it isn't, and the same applies to this. You know, you've got a very obvious effect going on. The rest of the time, you just see it. Nathan, I, 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 you guys kind of know this stuff inside out and can define terms and what goes and blah, blah, blah. And for, for the as less uh, detailed in it, 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 it kind of comes down to me that there are all these these images, effects, etc., but all of them have a prerequisite that. Them to be generated, really, it needs to be done. The object needs to be there and yeah. on a flat plane. It, they're all have that kind of minimum requirement, whether you're getting looming, this, that, the other kind of base requirement is that you're viewing it over a flat plane for the image to be able to distort these minor small details that we're seeing. And even the looming, it's, it's not a well, I was going to say that the, 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 I mean, basically, basically, they get all this analysis of the you know, the what's going on in the light spectrum and everything else, but really there's only two two basic things, right? You get light, well, three. You get the light at the surface, then you just got reflection and refraction. It's just a combination of those things. Yeah. Like all these technical terms, of Fata Morgana and this and that, superior, minor, you know, minor mirage, superior mirage, all this stuff is just obfuscation of the truth, right? making it technical when it's not. It's just a reflection. <laughs> Yeah, but, 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 but an ice cream, you need a cone and a, and a dollop of ice cream. You right. prerequisites for all of these effects require it to be there in the first place. Right. For a re for a reflection to occur, you need a surface for it to re occur on. Right. So you need a mirror if you're going to see a reflection. Yeah. yeah. So what what they're trying to say is that um, looming is a passive consequence that doesn't have any of these watermark features. You just you just can't tell that it's looming, but they're saying that it is, and I'm thinking, well, no, because it has to be obvious that there's something going on, and Ranty's work appears to have nothing going on. All right, there is a little bit of like distra uh, like a little bit of um obstruct like what's the word distortion, but that don't make it like um like all oh, right. So it's got a little bit of distortion, therefore it's looming. It, it's it's obvious that it appears to be obvious if it is looming. The the converse of that is, we see that the distortions that that can occur and what it does to the image, squashing, stretching, etc. Uh, and we're sure these observations are you know are flat, and we, we can see them replicated on known flat surfaces. We're going to argue about wall and stuff, but with 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 regards to it, we're, we're seeing what it, how much it distorts the image. And what's then incredulous is to suggest that we can get this refraction to then curve and render around a ball that that's that's the the next impossible step that you may be able to do on one line of sight uh, one straight laser line to get that mathematically to bend but to be able to render the image is the 
the other big leap of faith again that the ball mass requires. Praise Helios. <laughs> Turned in there. Well, you could, it's easy to do with mathematics and get a general result that works most of the time, which is just 7.6R. But whenever we discuss this, we get told that, well, the atmospheric refraction only needs certain conditions to do this. And they're saying it like you've got some sort of, like they have, the ball believers, that is, have some sort of scientific backing for this 7.6R. But it's just 7.6R. That's all it is. Yeah, it's just, it's just random. There's no, there's no real standard refraction that's just nonsense right if it was then it would be you know they use seven six r for light then why would you use four thirds r for uh, for uh, you know microwaves and radar Isn't it the maybe same we should medium? just call maybe we should just call it r fraction <laughs> r fraction r that, fraction say that again chris exactly. say that r again fraction. about four thirds well, if you're going to apply seven, like they use seven six R for visible light, and then then if you look at other papers and stuff on refraction in the atmosphere, supposedly they use four thirds R if they're talking about uh, radar, right? Which allows it to extend to three hundred and fifty miles, right? For effectiveness on when they're doing scatter Rayleigh really scatter radar of, of storms and, and water and stuff, right? For for weather radar systems, they get a range of three three four hundred miles, you know, ballpark. But they, they change the radius to four thirds R to justify the mathematics for the signals that they're interpreting. Is that really so you, Ruhif? Hold on a second, Chris. Is that you, Ruhif? Oh. No. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Good to have you. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yes. Hey, no. did you, you join yesterday? Joy? He's still there. Good, good. Uh, did I? I think I did. Or well, night before. Probably not last night. I had a decent sleep, so not last night. No. Ah, right. So, yeah, because somebody uh, took your image and then sniped everyone. Oh, well, okay, not me. Good to mm. know. Yeah, um, I'm only going to be here for like five minutes because I'm going to bed. Um, 7.6R is not bullshit. I, I will do a video on it explaining how you get 7.6R. Oh, goody. Goody, yes. No, none of you guys will understand it because none of you guys can handle it. Yeah, we do. Sticks in there. the ground. Well done. Well, that's great news. That's great news. So you'll tell us how you get the 7, and you'll tell us how you get the 6, and you'll tell us how you get the R, right? That's no, that's not part of the video. Oh, so you just said you're going to make a video telling us how you get 76R. Is R not part of 76R? No. Oh, it is, I assure you. 76 has an R value in it, and you're not going to tell us how you the got video, that bit. You're just going to ignore the that video bit. Will are you? Listen, the video will explain why we go straight to refracted hidden and ignore the geometric hidden. Sorry, will it explain 7 and 6 and R or not? It will explain the effective Earth radius and why it increases. So you'll be able to explain where you got R from? No, the video will not do that. I thought it was pretty clear, Nathan. You're fucking stupid, are you? Oh, right. Going to start calling me names and swear words. That was quick. Yeah, to that was fast. Three minutes, so well, that was home. fast. All I had to do was ask for R. Amazing, isn't it? Come on, kick me out and go to bed. I'm not kicking you out. I'm laughing at you. <laughs> You've just said well, you'll, give, I, us, I have a, I have a you'll give us 7.6R, because... and then when I ask, will you yeah. give us the R bit in that 7.6R, you say no. <laughs> right, okay. No, it will explain do the multiplier need, of the radius. Do you need, like, five minutes of humiliation just before going to bed? Does that make you sleep better? <laughs> it gets me to sleep, at home. yes, it does. Fair enough. If you want to be a masochist, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Like, I don't expect any of you guys to get it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Get what? You're not going to explain R. You're just going to use it? No, I'll explain the 7 over 6. Who cares? The R bit is what this debate is about. Yeah, I don't care if you guys care. I... Well, this is a flat earth debate. And you're saying, well, I'm just going to assume it's a, you know, it's got a radius and then apply 7, 6 and explain the 7, 6 bit. Forget the R bit, the yeah. thing the whole debate's yeah, exactly. about. That's not important, right, Ruby? It's just the crux if... of this debate. If there is an R, this is why we go straight to the refracted hidden. If there is an R, then prove the R, right? Don't just assume that you've got an R by saying if there is an R. That's begging the question. I don't think you know what begging the question is. Uh, Assuming your outcome. So saying if there's a radius, well, by saying that, Ruhif, you're automatically assuming there is a radius. That's why I'm no. asking you to prove yeah. the R bit, not arbitrarily yeah, just I, apply it and yeah, not justify the R bit. Not just the 7, 6 bit, mate. The R bit's included. Do you know what a hypothetical is? Oh, really? I don't care. We're not talking about hypothetical things. <laughs> We're talking about reality, Ruhif. Yeah, all right. 
So no R then. Well, <laughs> thanks for that. Very useful. Oh, actually, no, I did want to talk to you guys. Sorry, I'll hang around for a bit. Um, the uh, turbines. What's the go there? I've already dealt with that. Do you want me to do it again while you're here? Yeah, I haven't, yeah, I haven't listened earlier. I was doing other shit. So. Okay, bear with me. Uh, screen share. My entire screen. Let me know, Wraith. Yep. I can see your screen. Yep, hold on. So basically, you, um, you were saying that um, because when the, when we go into the side profile, we're not getting the 11 miles left to right. We're only getting two or three, two miles. And therefore, we're only getting, was it 12 inches or whatever? Yeah, yeah, something. Okay. So I said that the main element of this picture over a mile or so is perspective because there's next to no curvature in a mile. It's like eight inches, right? Yeah, basically, yeah. So what Chris did was um, he, he got Rant, uh, our, uh, Ranty's picture side by side and he plotted the turbines over the distance. And this is with the accumulated drop from 13 miles away and then zoomed in. And yep. you can see clearly that the center point of all of the turbines creates an arc going over the hump. However, we see a straight line going through there. So oh, if... So you... Go on. Is your original question whether I can see curvature in that picture or whether that drop should translate to the side-on picture with the red line? Uh, we um, asked you, I asked you and got it tied down conclusively when I asked you, when I first showed you this three shows ago, I said, are we seeing what the math says we are seeing, which is these turbines conforming me, to a curved... Why are you, why are you talking over me? I asked away? you the question and you answered it, Ruhif. Are these curving around the Earth? Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. They are on a globe. They are curving around the Earth. Yes. Right. Right. Well, you didn't ask me whether I saw it in the photo. That's what we're talking about, you absolute buffoon. Are these in this photo? Did you need the extra words while it was on screen and you were looking at it? No, you said, are these? Are these the as in the yes. thing on screen? Yeah. And they're on a globe, yeah, they're you're saying I didn't know you were talking about the photograph. Are you having a laugh? No, you didn't ask me about the photograph. You said... Are really? They what I will do yeah, then, Ruhif, is I will edit the out the section with it on screen and me asking you and you replying three mm. times yes to my yes, question. On a globe, are these are turbines curving, curving yeah. around the earth while the photo was on screen? The following day, you said you couldn't tell the difference between whether it was perspective or curvature, even though you told mm. us simultaneously that you don't need to account for perspective, even though you don't know the difference. No, I said I couldn't tell whether that was perspective or curvature. You... Right, but you don't account for perspective. It can't be perspective because you don't account for it, right? It's not needed, is it, Ruhif? No, it's not. Oh, right. Well, if you can't tell the difference and it appears in the picture, then you absolutely must account for it, you idiot. No. Oh, right. I'll just ignore it. So the maths say that there's no perspective. So there's no perspective. It's just curvature. Right, Ruhif? Yes. Right, Ruhif? Yes. Right, Ruhif? Yes, it's curving around the sphere of the Earth. Right, okay, Ruhif. Uh, Following day, uh, I don't know what's, it, what's perspective and what's not. Day after that, I didn't even think you were showing me a photograph. My God, you're digging yourself a big hole. Do I deny perspective, Nathan? Yeah, your calculator does. And you do when you apply the maths to any picture, Ruhif. Yes, you deny perspective. Ruhif, can I have your attention yep. a sec? Yep. Um, in the... In the picture of the lamppost that's got va basically no curve in it because it's a mile, um, yeah, we, we, see that the main, we see that the main feature is a straight line and there's no accumulated curvature, correct? Mm. Uh, yeah, sure. But when we go to the picture that Ranty took, that's 13 miles or whatever it was, there is an accumulation of curve, yet we still mm. get a straight line going through the hubs, correct? Uh, pretty straight, but I mean they're obscured a little bit as well. Right, sorry, would you just say that again? Pretty straight or not straight? Oh, like, <laughs> some of the turbines are blocking the hubs of the ones behind, right? So. Oh, right. Okay, three so days ago, good. I asked you if this was conforming to the curve of the Earth, and I got a yes three times. No, you said, are these turbines curving around the Earth? And I said, yes, we're on a globe. Right. Yeah, right. Of course they are. So Brilliant. if these turbines are curving around the, cur the curve of the Earth, why do the centre points of these like bend away from the straight line? But in the picture in real world... They go straight, so, straight as a 
And this is with the accumulated curve. Yeah, that Chris Monk photo on the left does not look right. That does not look like 11 miles. It's, it's no, not a I, photograph. Sorry, just for the audience's benefit. Because it's on the sorry, globe. Sorry, Owen. Just, just for the audience's benefit. No, that's just, why hold on, different. hold on. Sorry, there's obviously Ruhi has just demonstrated a problem that people obviously have in cognition. The picture on the left is a model. Hold on, Ruhif, I just need to get this clear because it's clear that you didn't understand because you called it a photograph. So the picture on the left is not a photograph. It's just a model. Just a model, Ruhif. Okay? The picture on the right, that's the real world. That's a photograph. The picture on the left, that's a model. Yeah, uh, really, if the if the gaps between all the posts are not if you're not happy with them, all it means is he, he's got to move the observer over a little tiny bit. But that isn't going to change the, the slope effect, the gradient that we see because of the curve. And he is on the panel now. If you'd like him to change the location of the observer to make these close up the gap a little bit, I'm it sure does, it doesn't it. matter because you can put a thousand fence posts on there. It's still going to fall. Rue has basically service. just admitted. He said it didn't look right. And it is. He's correct. It doesn't look right because that is rendered as if the Earth were a globe, which is, is not, which it is not. Yeah. So your eyes um, will tell you this. There's something wrong about this. How, how's about that? How Ruif reality looks. looks right. <laughs> how's about that? Ruif don't think it looks right. I wonder why that might be Ruif. Yeah. Well, Slice Bar Kane's done it as well. Well, well Slice Bar Kane's been challenged to a hangout with me, and I'm waiting for him to give me a straight yes or a straight no. Does he agree to terms? So That's I'm not sure point. we can take his word for, for, for your. Uh, can you present the thing that Slice Bar Kane's done to to compare? Bear no, in I'm mind that this. Man, it's like. Bear in it's, mind that this uh, picture was uh, this model based on this picture. Hang on, what do I do? Hold on a sec. Break. Right, and the other there. thing to note, Ruif, is that look at the angle of the um, approach as well. The angle is significantly different. I wonder why that might be. Oh, Shit, sorry. The angle of approach. Yeah. Look at the gradient that the line follows. Yeah, I, I don't think Chris Monk's done it right. Right. So Chris, do you want to present what you've done on, on this and maybe we can go through the basic attributes with Ruhif and he can tell you where you've done it wrong? Well, since we're interested in, in it, I'd have to, uh, objective well, research, I would just suggest go do it yourself and come back with yeah, uh, your own objective Yeah, opinion. go do it yourself, exactly. dude. <laughs> <laughs> prove no, me wrong. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah, prove him wrong if he's done it wrong. You can put, you can put a thousand wrong. posts on a curved surface and you'll still have a curved line no matter how you do it. You can't put curvature really straight, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Go for uh, it. Hey, Chris, yeah, I will. Yeah. did you also happen to make uh, one of these turbine uh, uh, renderings on the flat plane? How that would look? Did you? I don't know. It looks like a straight line. Yeah. It's perspective then. It's just a perspective gradient. Did you hear me? Yep. Did I hear you or Chris hear you? No, I asked Chris, like, did you yeah. also happen to make a, a version uh, with the turbines, like a rendering of that, but not on a simulated globe, but on a flat plane? Is it comparing? Yeah, he said that? he did, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, did, yeah and it, just, it looks like the, basically the same as the picture that uh, Anthony had up there. It's just like light posts on a flat street. Cool. Yeah, I will render it myself, and I'll uh, I assume I'll make a video. And you'll it. fudge it and make it look curved. No, I'll, I'll render it as the uh, details are given. 11 miles, 13 miles. Um, <laughs> you can't put a curve in when it's flat, dude. Yeah, can't want to happen. Um, last thing before I go to bed. Um, Chris Monk, like how how are you on this bandwagon of of wanting the perspective built into the curve calculator? Of all the people, I thought you would get it. Yeah, he does. Well, clearly Things get smaller over distance, right? Yeah, we all know that. So why do you apply the field, the of, field of the view? Absolute. You know, narrowing down field of view, all of that. Things it's not it's not so easily calculatable. It's just basic yeah, but geometry. Uses blender, right? There, there's yeah, optical can... effects, the narrowing down of the field of view, all that kind of stuff in real life optics, real optics, real perspective. But in Blender, he could easily sort of uh, render a scene to verify the curve calculator. That's why I was shocked that he didn't do it. Hang on a sec. You're misrepresenting the argument, though. The argument is not the curve, the curve calculator is wrong. Hang on. No, no, that is not the argument. We accept the numbers that are in the curve calculator. It's, the ha it's, how, it's how you know. It's always been this, so pay attention. 
It's how you guys apply the, the refracted hidden value against the absolute height of the target. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in. Did I say that right? Let's try that again. A massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible and a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you hated the show, then you know exactly what to do. But if you like the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you have not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!